Tuning into daily news podcast on Mangalore today means staying ahead with insights and updates that matter. Today, we're diving into the news that shapes our community and our world. Welcome aboard. In a proud moment for Mangaluru, Chinmay from SDM English Medium School, Belpangadi clinched the second rank in the state SSLC results, scoring 624 marks. He is the son of Malini and Ganesh Ramachandra Bhatt, a lecturer in Belthangadi PU College. Adding to the glory, Sahana from Janasuda High School, Kukandur and Karkala Taluk secured the third rank in the state, scoring 623 marks. Congratulations to the young achievers. In a tragic incident in Sampaja village near Sulia, a 16-year-old girl named Rashmitha, a student of Sulia Junior College, took her own life by hanging herself at her residence in Dodadka. The incident occurred on Wednesday evening when the rest of her family members were away. Rashmitha, daughter of Gopal and Bobby, ended her life under circumstances that remain unknown. This incident has left the local community in shock and mourning. In an impressive feat, Udupi District has secured the top position in the state for the SSLC exam results, boasting a remarkable pass percentage of 94%. Following closely behind is Dakshina Kannada District, securing the second position with a commendable pass percentage of 92.1%. The overall pass percentage across the state stands at 76.91%. Students can check their results online at currysults.na.in. Mangaluru, today, the state government of Karnataka has decided to withdraw the four-year honors degree from the upcoming academic year, as recommended by the State Education Policy Commission. The Higher Education Department issued an order reinstating the three-year degree programs for students. This change will not affect current students under the national education policy. The decision aims to provide equal opportunities to students from diverse backgrounds and align with global education standards. The government also emphasized the importance of infrastructure and faculty availability for the success of the education system. Universities are instructed to start the admission process for the next academic year through the Unified University College Management System. The revised curriculum includes three-year UG degree programs with various major and elective courses, while the assessment pattern would be 80-20. These changes are in line with the recommendations of the SEP Commission, focusing on the holistic development of students across Karnataka. Tragedy strikes as a laborer loses his life due to suffocation while cleaning a well at Devadigara Betu in Brahmavar. The victim, identified as Durgesh, entered the 35 feet deep well along with another worker, Adivepa Kuri. Fortunately, Kuri was rescued in time by fire service personnel. The incident occurred when they sprinkled bleaching powder inside the well and suffocated due to lack of oxygen. Both workers hailed from Kopala district. Brahmavar police have filed a case in this regard. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family of the deceased during this difficult time. In a tragic incident, a second year engineering student, Nitesh Rao from Udupi, has been found dead at a government hostel near Bibi Alabi Road in Mangaluru. The student had been residing in Mangaluru for the past two years. The reason behind his untimely demise remains unclear. The authorities have initiated an investigation into the case following a complaint lodged by his grieving mother. Our thoughts are with the family and friends of the departed soul during this difficult time. In a distressing incident at Malpe Beach, Udupi, a lifeguard named Teja Kodian was attacked by a group of six tourists on Wednesday evening. Despite Teja's warnings about the rough sea, the tourists ignored him and continued swimming. When Teja intervened again, they turned violent towards him. Thankfully, other lifeguards intervened and rescued Teja from the assault. The incident has been reported to the Malpe police station and an investigation is underway. Stay tuned for further updates. Senior Congress leader and former MLA of Belthangadi, Kavasanth Bangjara, aged 79, breathed his last at a private hospital in Bengaluru yesterday. A five-time MLA from Belthangadi, Bangjara served in the State Assembly, representing BJP, JDS, and Congress. He was elected first as an MLA on a BJP ticket in 1983, later joining Janata Dal. Bangjara, known for his popularity, also served as Chief Whip of the State Assembly. He won the elections in 2008 and 2013 representing Congress, but lost to BJP's Harish Punja in 2018.
his demise has left a deep void in the political landscape of Belthengedi, where he had a massive following and was respected by many. In a shocking turn of events in Sandesh Kali, West Bengal, a woman and her mother-in-law have withdrawn their rape complaint against Trinamool Congress leaders. They claim they were coerced into signing a white paper at the National Commission for Women's Behest. This comes after a BJP employee's video surfaced, alleging the party's involvement in the incident. The woman revealed how she was pressured by the Delhi Mahila Commission to file false complaints without knowing the contents. They have now lodged a fresh complaint with the police due to threats and social exclusion after retracting the allegations against TMC leaders. The BJP has seized on the Sandesh Kali issue to criticize the Mamata Banerjee government ahead of the Lok Sabha elections. Earlier protests accused TMC leader Shah Jahan Sheikh and others of harassment and land grabbing. The BJP now faces counter-allegations after a TMC complaint to the Election Commission, citing a BJP leader's supposed admission of fabricating the rape charges. In Mangalore, today's latest update, the Supreme Court is all set to make a crucial decision on granting interim bail to Chief Minister of Mangalore, Anil Kumar, to enable him to participate in the ongoing Lok Sabha elections. The Enforcement Directorate has strongly opposed this move, stating that election campaigning is not a fundamental right. The agency, which had arrested the CM in a corruption case, emphasized that no political leader has ever been granted bail for campaigning in the past. However, during the hearing, the Supreme Court recognized Chief Minister Kumar's position and noted that he is not a habitual offender. Stay tuned as the final verdict on this significant political issue unfolds. In a political showdown in Haryana, Former Deputy CM Dushant Chautala has urged the governor to conduct a floor test in the state assembly. The move follows the withdrawal of support from three independent MLAs, creating turmoil within the ruling BJP alliance. Chautala emphasized the need for a floor test to determine the government's majority, pointing to recent party defections. The JJP leader hinted at backing an alternative government, potentially aligning with the Congress. With the assembly at a delicate balance, BJP short of two MLAs for a majority, Congress with 30 MLAs plus independent support, and JJP potentially tipping the scales, the political landscape in Haryana remains uncertain. Stay tuned for further updates on this developing story. In a shocking incident in Mangalore, a video has surfaced online today allegedly showing a minor boy casting a vote during the recent Lok Sabha elections. The boy, said to be the son of a local BJP leader, accompanied his father to the polling booth and appeared to cast a vote on his father's behalf. The video, shared on social media, has raised questions about how a mobile phone was allowed inside the polling booth and how a child was allowed to participate in the voting process. District officials have acknowledged the video and have initiated an investigation into the matter. Action is expected to be taken against those involved in allowing this incident to occur. The Election Commission is yet to respond to the video. Stay tuned to Mangalore Today for further updates on this developing story. Mangalore, 9th May 2024. In a significant development, the Enforcement Directorate, ED, is set to file its first charges sheet against the Chief Minister of Delhi, Arvind Kejriwal, in a money laundering case related to the scrapped liquor policy. For the first time, Kedrawal will be named as an accused in the case. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court is scheduled to hear a plea for interim bail by Kedrawal on Friday. The ED is expected to label Kedrawal as a kingpin and a key figure in the liquor policy case in the charges sheet. Justice Sanjeev Khanna of the Supreme Court has directed the additional Solicitor General to be prepared with submissions for the upcoming hearing. Kedrawal's plea for interim bail was not granted earlier, as the court expressed concerns about a possible conflict of interest if he resumes his official duties while on bail. Kedrawal's arrest by the ED in March, in connection to the liquor policy case, has kept him detained in Delhi's Tihar jail. In the recent SSLC examination results declared by the Karnataka School Examination and Evaluation Board, there has been a noticeable decline in the pass percentage by 10.49 points as compared to the previous year. The overall pass percentage stands at 73.40 this year, whereas it was 83.89 in the previous academic year. 
The results are available for students to access on the official website http eveKarnataka.gov.in and will also be sent to their registered mobile numbers. Out of the total 8,005,967 9, students who appeared for the exams, 6,031,204 have successfully cleared it. Ankita Basapakona from Morarji Desai Residential School in Mudhol has secured the first position in the state by obtaining a perfect score of 625 out of 625. Udupi District has emerged as the top performing district with a pass percentage of 94, followed by Dakshina Kannada, Shivamoga, Kodagu, and Uttara Kannada. Mangaluru Today brings you the latest from Thiruvananthapuram, where the Metropolitan Bishop Moran Mor Athanasius Johan of Believer's Eastern Church tragically passed away after a car accident in Dallas, U.S. The 74-year-old bishop, known as K.P. Yohanan, founded the Believer's Church in Kerala and was a renowned evangelist. Following the accident, he was airlifted for surgery but suffered a cardiac arrest. Bishop Yohanan's contributions include setting up Bible colleges, a hospital, and supporting charity work through Gospel for Asia. His church was known for supporting BJP-led NDA candidates in elections. The Synod will soon meet to discuss the funeral arrangements for the beloved bishop. Stay tuned to Mangaluru today for updates on this developing story. Former Indian cricketer Irfan Pathan is all set to join the election rally in support of his brother, Yusuf Pathan, who is contesting for the Trinamool Congress in Baharampur. Irfan will be in Baharampur for the final campaign rally before the fourth phase of elections. The duo will be conducting a roadshow across various areas of the Baharampur constituency on Thursday, including Razinagar and Beldanga. Trinamool Congress leader Abhishek Banerjee has already campaigned in support of Yusuf Pathan. Meanwhile, Yusuf Pathan is up against Congress's Adhir Ranjan Chowdhury, who has been the sitting MP since 1999. The Congress had lodged a complaint with the Election Commission over the use of ICC Cricket World Cup 2011 photos in the election campaign, citing the use of banners and posters displaying images from the iconic victory. Mangalore, tech giant Google has launched Google Wallet in India, offering users access to essential everyday services on their Android smartphones. The platform allows storage of flight boarding passes, cinema tickets, loyalty cards, and more. With collaborations with Indian brands like PVR, Flipkart, and Kochi Metro, users can access various functionalities within the wallet. Users can store movie tickets, boarding passes, loyalty cards, and public transit tickets. Google Wallet is separate from Google Pay and focuses on non-payment features. Users with Android 7.0 or above can download the app from the Play Store and add items like loyalty cards or transport passes. Google emphasizes that Google Wallet enhances convenience without replacing Google Pay for payment needs in India. In Mangalore Today News Bulletin, the Congress Party's Kerala unit criticized the high fares and low occupancy rates of Vandabharat trains, citing an analysis of IRCTC booking data. The party highlighted that over 50% of Vandabharat trains operate with empty or partially filled seats, indicating economic disparities in access to these costly services. They compared the ticket prices of Vandabharat trains to Garab Roth trains, pointing out the prohibitive costs for ordinary travelers. The party emphasized the need for Indian railways to cater to diverse passenger demographics and raised concerns about the government's economic policies affecting affordability. This critique comes in the background of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's emphasis on Vandabharat trains, with the Congress alleging economic mismanagement leading to expensive trains running empty. Stay tuned for more updates. Kojikode Governor Arif Mohammed Khan expressed his reverence at the Ram Temple in Ayodhya during his recent visit. The governor, known for his deep respect towards different faiths, visited the holy site and bowed before the deity. This marks his third visit to Ayodhya, where he expressed his joy and pride in worshiping Lord Sriram. A video shared on the Kerala governor's official social media handle captured Mr. Khan's devout moment with the resonant chant of Jai Shri Ram echoing in the background. The governor's visit exemplifies the spirit of unity and harmony amongst diverse beliefs. Air India Express, owned by Tata Group, has terminated 30 cabin crew members who went on mass sick leave without notice, leading to the cancellation of over 100 flights 
affecting 15,000 passengers. The crew members were rostered for a flight but reported sick last moment. The airline called it a pre-mediated abstention from work, violating company rules and causing disruptions. The terminated crew will no longer have employee benefits. Air India Express CEO announced flight curtailments till May 13 due to the crew crisis. The Ministry of Civil Aviation has sought a report on the delays and cancellations. Passengers faced chaos in airports due to the sudden cancellations. Alternative flights are being arranged. This crisis adds to existing discontent among crew members, particularly after the merger process with AX Connect began. In December 2023, the airline was issued a notice for alleged violations related to disputes with cabin crew members. In a significant development, three terrorists have been neutralized in a 40-hour-long encounter with security forces in the Redwani area of Kulgam District, Kashmir. The Indian Army confirmed that the operation, which commenced on Monday night, concluded on Thursday morning. Among the terrorists killed were a wanted operative of Lashkari Toiba, Basit Dar. During the search operation, a fresh exchange of fire occurred with a terrorist hiding in a nearby house. The Army, in a statement, stated, 3 Dex terrorists have been eliminated along with recovery of warlike stores, inflicting yet another hit on the terror ecosystem. This successful joint operation underscores the commitment of the China Corps to uphold peace and tranquility in the region. And that's a wrap for today. We're thankful for your viewership and invite you to delve deeper into today's topics at mangalortoday.com. Keep up with the ever-evolving world by subscribing to our channel. Thank you for being part of our day. Good night and stay informed.